It's always important to have a backup of your important data, just in case something happens to your computer. I'll click the Activity button and search for backups. I have my external flash drive plugged into my system, and for this video, I'll use that as my backup drive. If you have a network file server, you can use that as well. To start up a backup, first I'll choose Folders to Save. Here my home folder is selected. Under Folders to Ignore, the backup software won't back up my trash and it won't back up the contents of my user folder's downloads folder. That's probably a good idea. Then I'll choose storage location. It's suggesting a cloud service, but I'll change it to my USB drive. The backup needs to live inside a folder, whether it's on a disk or a file share. I'll give a name for folder. It's chosen the name of my machine, but I'll change it to Scott's backup. If it doesn't exist, the backup software will create it for me. And then under scheduling, I can choose whether or not I want to use automatic backup. That certainly sounds like a good idea, so I'll turn it on. I can choose to run the backup every day or every week. I'll switch to every day, and we'll keep files that are backed up forever. I'll go back to the overview. Here, I can see that there have been no recent backups, and that the next backup is today. That'll happen sometime later, but I'll click Backup Now to make the backup happen right now. The application needs some more software, so I'll click Install, and I'll authorize it. Now, it's asking for a password. You can choose not to have a password, but it's a good idea to set a password on your backup. That way, if someone else plugs in your backup disk, they won't be able to easily access all your files. So, I'll provide a password. And then I'll click Forward. You'll need to supply this password when you backup in the future, unless you click Remember Password. And you'll need to provide it when you restore your files, too. OK, the backup's complete. To restore files, you can go through the Backups interface and choose Restore. This will let you restore files to the original location or to a different location. But it restores everything. If you want to restore individual files, there's another way. I'll open up my file browser, and I'll go to my Pictures folder. If you right-click on a file, there's an option to revert to a previous version. This will let you choose an earlier version of the file to restore. This is handy if you've saved over the wrong file, or you made a change you didn't like, or something like that. You'll be asked where you want to restore from, when you want to restore from, and then you can click Restore to get the file back. I haven't changed this file at all, but you get the idea. If you delete a file and want to get it back, the backup software has you covered as well. I'll delete some of my pictures. And I'll even empty my trash. Those files are now gone from my computer. Oh no, I needed them. Well, good thing I have a backup. I'll right-click in the Pictures folder and choose Restore Missing Files. The backup software knows what it's backed up from here in the past, so it knows what's missing, and when it was last seen. I'll select both of these files, and then I'll click Forward. I'll click Restore to restore the files. I'll type in the password for my backup, and choose Forward. And I can see that the software restored my missing files. Of course, backups will only happen if your backup disk is plugged in and your system is on. But outside of that, this software gives you a safety net for your files.